Okay, we're taking a look at some pre-dynastic Egyptian glyphs and some other information and the first recorded pre-dynastic mummy here. So this is the first of recordings of the pre-dynastic Egyptians. Now we realize that, of course, before Narmer had unified the two lands together, that they were separate lands and that it had gone on for quite some time before that. So they've come up with a concept of Dynasty Zero and then there's a negative situation, too, that goes back. Oh, you know, way back a few thousand years before what we're willing to believe, the people were already endemic to the area and starting to do things and uh, live. But at that time, this was a fully greened oasis area and started to go bad. And we'll take a look at that as we do. And what this is, is a clip from a BBC presentation. And this is Joanne Fletcher and another Egyptologist that are coming up here to look at these glyphs. And uh, one thing I want to note is the level and the staggeredness of these that almost looks like the pyramidish rocks that you can see over here and you can see over here and I'm not saying that this thing was man-made in any way but this concept of these people living around these mesas that are made out of this fragmented flattened edged rock in their face all the time that they could build with slightly things like that and this at one time was their primordial happy hunting ground and in that happy hunting ground, if you will, they drew animals. Like the first cattle that they had apparently gotten from Sumerian Anatolian areas. And you can see the outlines of these. They're like bulls. And there's one area that shows a whole grouping of them that they're headed to now. And there's also a real hippopotamus. Or, well, a drawing of a hippopotamus. We can make it out here. Here's this little smile. Here in a second, he'll, uh, he'll outline it, but he's showing it. There's its back and the little flag tail and its back legs and its front legs and how big the tummy is. And, of course, it's got a mouth. They've always got a smile. And once she recognizes it, you start seeing one, you start seeing another. Now, this has been enhanced slightly, so it'll show you. Boom. There's a cat. And people have tried to figure out what it could be. What what are these, you know, things? Is it just what they see around them? Is it just regular clinical art or is it not? It seems like it's not. It has a symbolicness with it. And it almost looks like hunting magic. Uh, because the cro magnons we had before this, we used to have shamans and things. And there was women that would set men out to hunt. And there's a lion. It used to be very lush at the time, back in the old days. I mean, you can look through this and it looks like a dead valley here really devoid of just about anything but not too long ago it would have looked a lot more lush than can even be presented right here the whole thing would have been greened out a lot more vegetation and these cattle that they brought up into the area and they would let them graze in endemic areas but once this once this started to dwindle away and to go away totally it ended up being to where they had to direct themselves to the Nile and in the direction of going to the Nile itself and having to rely on it, they took the endemic grains that they had been given from Sumer and concentrated them running down the Nile and running off of that and then due to interaction with the Sumerians, seeing how they irrigated and did all their things, it came to them and it flourished this great society that we know about. One of these looks kind of like a donkey, but the rest of them definitely look like that and it's some type of hunting magic you can almost see these things are like drawn as if they're somewhat still alive and the magic of it she loves it talks about it it's joy and Fletcher. but you can see this one mesa here and how the mesa is just painted with these these effigies that are on it here and how this would have been a symbolic place a happy hunting ground for the hunters that are here all right for their cattle that they have in a land of milk and honey. It's abundance. There's stuff everywhere. It's a golden age where we didn't have to worry about things. We didn't have bureaucracy. We didn't have anything. Everybody looks back to a golden age before. It seems like every generation will do it. So we'll look at this, but then let's also look at these. You find glyphs like this where it shows you these people and their symbolic feathers that they used to wear and that they're hunting, right? And shooting after things and this looks like a horse but they didn't have horses there at all so I'm wondering what that is possibly but this animal here's out of shape too maybe it's a donkey 
but there looks like there are some cows in here and one with big horns which has got to be like the antelope type things that they have there in the gazelles and the oryx that have that and looks like there's a jackal and hunting dogs that are with this man and it almost looks like they're lining up and sticking sticks and if you will look they're hunting and it shows lines going from that to over here right in the corner of the picture you can't quite make it out but there's a cow there like they're shooting at the cow and they're shooting these lines at them scratched in like like if you were a kid drawing this type thing there's also a symbolic boat that's drawn here which is quite neat and you can see the symbolic there's two boats actually a smaller one and a larger one that's here and she's got one in her hand that's another glyph that shows you the same type of thing it's off of a wall and you can see here another oryx type thing that's huge people somebody with a rope lassoing one of these it looks like either that or they're indicating maybe he threw a boomerang and that's his scratch line again. One of these pictures people really love to pick out. This guy here, he's an alien. If you look, his two feathers sticking up makes him Marvin the Martian. And now we've got Martian Egyptians going hunting. And of course, this deer here has a long neck on it. And everybody tries to say it's dinosaurs. And look, the little things are too long. And oh, but really we don't see anything like that. Also, there's a few like this that have been scratched on much later. People can see the patina is not even there and somebody tried to add to these. They can see the patina in these and see which one's old. And you can see how this is lighter than the rest of it. And this camel was added at a much later date. But uh, if you've seen one of my videos here earlier, you can see this and this symbolic person here is taken all the way up to Anatolia and way back, way back in time when the very first of writings there were and the writings that look just like linear and scratch lines and I wonder if somebody could decipher this to see if it actually says anything versus it may be looking just like a whole bunch of people in a boat going somewhere. And these symbolic Viking tipped boats that come from Sumeria and here and so on, the Phoenicians later. Kind of amazing. Later that's become the boats. Later the cow becomes that and Hathor with it and stuff and you can see just the simplistic of art that starts out here that ends up becoming great and well-known art here in the future and it doesn't take too long before it does so. The other earliest places you can find is Nabda Playa and here's the first cow they've made a circulature but they've also made a lineup that runs right down that run and this run faces towards the polar stars Everything changed here about 10,500 years ago, as I keep saying in videos, and the earth got kicked. They're willing to admit it in these videos and things, but where does this channel line up to right here? Well, if you look the other way where she's looking here at nighttime, it's the polar stars that come around, and this would be your Sirius, and then Orion goes around and around in that symbolic pose that you see in the Egyptian statues and where he's doing the smiting. He always says a mace. That's where that comes up. And then they have other stones that as long as that's lined up, they have other stones and where the sun rises, it's farthest point here, it's farthest point there. It's a simplistic calendar, but it says this is the end of summer, this is the end of winter, and this is lined up on north. And this is what starts them to be putting all of their temples and things shortly after all lined up to symbolic things so everything's hooked up it's a symbolic connection from the heavens to the earth as above so below and so what we've been looking at and we keep looking at are this pre-dynastic period that you see but there's variations in this there's loose pottery there's urnware and rounded ware and then there's stonework that is just incredible that has this little loop handle effect that I've shown you a lot of that really requires a whole different level of civilization but let's continue to look in this 5000 BC to 3100 year span here what comes out of it 
You look at these ancient Bedarian settlements they've got and where the Gibeline area is, and they had these mummies that were in there and all this ancient pottery, bins and areas for grain and things and storage. And this is neat. This is like the very first oven sets. They would heat these up in an oven, pull them out, and then you'd take that lump of bread that you got and you'd throw the thing in there and let it sit, and it would automatically puff up. They put it back in the oven and toast the top of it, boom, and there's your piece of bread, and thump it out. And these are the drinking urns, which shows you a connection to the Sumerians. This is that sweat glass that they had in the point. Let's look at the very first mummy that they can find in the pre gibeline age, and you can see this is called ginger. And uh, ginger is a natural made mummy, and I don't know if you can quite make it out of here, but he has a golden hair to him. That's why they call him ginger really ought to kind of call him Blondie, but we're naturally putting him in the ground and would naturally desiccate and dry up and freeze dry. And in that process, they were saved or preserved. And so we can look at things like that and you can see how they preserved life and they would keep somebody's essence still alive. It's quite interesting. It shows you a burial where he's placed in a burial set that puts him in a uh, position that looks very much like a fetal position that goes back to Canaanite burials and Cro-Magnon burials and the red ochre burials that I've been showing you in a lot of the other vids a primordial thing before they're kept in a kingly pose these people were born and are reborn again like that and you can see his blonde hair golden curl hairs that are still kept on here even though it's scalp is cracked off loose in places and stuff he's really just dehydrated almost has no weight to him most of a uh, human body is actually you know moisture and stuff so um, quite intricate now they're known to have moved the burial place that they used to keep them at in ancient times and uh, because there was Nubians and stuff coming in and raiding them and so they took and moved them down south and of course they had more of a central thing once they put everything together and they must have left quite a few of them up in this area and there must be others that no one knows about that are just under that dune over there but you can see here is blonde hair and they've scientifically looked at this and they you know no it's not real bleached out or anything this is just like that curly hair on the Greeks and you can tell these pale Caucasians are what started ancient Egypt Seeing this is going to be the transition, you would say, between natural desiccation of a mummy, luckily due to desertification, and then later turning that into an art of putting a body into a mummy. You can see how pale his skin is there. Even though he's soaked and stained so bad, he wasn't shellac like the other ones are. The other ones have that black shellac lacquer put on to them that really just darkens them up, and they all look as dark as his hands do. But uh, I do have a vid coming out, though, that shows they have found some mummies that predate the time that they say they started doing mummification, and even a mummy, one that was done half his body. But they don't mention that. It, it breaks their mold, and so they don't want to say that. And it, I don't know why people... They could just easily go, well, here's when they were really kicking it in, and here's the first few times they did it. So here, there you go. Uh, there were some monster movies back in the 20s and 30s, and then, man, they took off. But it's like they won't mention the 20 and 30 monster movies and the original Dracula things. They just won't mention that. They just say, nothing happened before the blob. And you're like, well, ugh. you know, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. They have this early form of writing, too, that they have that are these original chips. And this is the symbology chips where they have an ideogram, which is very much like the Sumerians, and it does show another connection with them. In fact, some of them are identical, although some of them are from local wildlife and local birds and so on that they do. But these different ones that they have here kind of show you the variation on them. And they're really confused as to what these things are necessarily. 
they say that these must be collecting from different groups, different little tribal groups, because these came in. So this is like taxation where they're getting things, people are giving homage, and these are to say, well, it came from here, or it came from here, or it came from there, it came from there. So they're trying to tell you, you know, second cataract from down the Nile, the duck people, you know, and so on. But that's just a symbology of it. Here we have an iris. And so that was used as the very first language that they had going on. And then once the Sumerians had got with them and shows them a phonetic type writing, and the Phoenicians, of course, take off with their Phoenician writing, which is no longer a whole bunch of pictures drawn to make a word, but just simple letters, which blends into what becomes Paleo-Hebrew and, of course, Greek, and uh, slowly twists into what we use today. But yeah, I just thought I would touch upon these three things and show you together. I think that's pretty interesting there. And uh, just in this short film, you can see a lot that comes from pre gibeline or Dynasty Zero of Egypt. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. Enjoy. Lots coming up in the future. Ring that bell. Hit that notification. Peace.